Hey guys, I know it feels like Groundhog Day, but this week we are again working on the interior. Okay, I thought uh, one of the first things I can do, simple things, is put in the door rubbers, and uh, that will let me get rid of this slur of headliner clips. And then I looked at the door rubbers, and for some reason I thought they actually clipped over the top of this edge, around the edge of the door, but uh, after looking at them, they actually just wedge into the slot. So, uh, it made me realise that this piece of vinyl that I trimmed for the car nice and carefully, I trimmed off too short, it's level with this, it needs to wrap over and into the gap. So, um, that means seat out, cage out, make the new piece, and then uh, I can go from there. Alright, so now I think it's a good time to go through and uh, actually clean up the headliner. I don't know if you can see it in the camera there, but uh, there's lots of gum that's left on the, the headliner from the adhesive that's come through it. So um, I'll go through and tidy that all up now, and then I'm going to hit it with, a, with the heat gun, using the same trick as I used on the seats, and uh, see if I can get rid of some of these uh, last little bits of the wrinkles. As with the leather, that worked quite well. The only thing I had to be really careful of, I noticed when I hit it a little bit harder, there's um, a bit of a leather grain pattern in this vinyl headliner, and if I let it get too hot, the leather grain pattern actually sort of disappeared. It looked like it was actually starting to melt, and I didn't, I was really careful. So, yeah, if you're going to do this on your own headliner, just um, really be careful because you will melt it really easily. All right, roll cage is in properly, finally. It was uh, a lot more work trying to squeeze it in. I realize now I didn't leave myself a lot of room to get to the nuts and bolts and stuff uh, around those interior panels. Uh, I think my idea of removable carpet is uh, definitely a long gone one because once everything's in there, it's just too hard to get it in and out with all the trim panels and stuff. I think the roll cage is going to, uh, is going to stay. All right, it's time to have a look at these door trims. Now, I do have the little plastic clips that stick into these holes, which are more for alignment rather than holding it there permanently. And in the past, it had the, uh, the bottom of the armrest, which screwed into these screw holes along the base here. Now, they're really small, and with the extra weight that I've added, being that they are now have the sound deadening in them, instead of using these, I'm gonna replace them and have along the bottom three rib nuts, with the nice Allen head bolts and the cut washers to just uh, make them nicely dressed. It's time to fit the door trims up and, uh, and drill some holes. All right, next little thing to tackle. These rubbers just keep falling out. They're not staying in there. I don't want to epoxy them in or anything because they're going to be a nightmare to get out if I ever have to change them or whatever. I'm just going to try some of the uh, contact adhesive I've used on everything else and a uh, bit on either side and see if that will hold them uh, in place. Alright, that looks like it was perfect. It's just the right amount of tack to uh, get it to stick nicely and it's uh, another job down. Alright, so I've got most of my door trim sorted, so the next job that I want to tackle is I want to make some RS style door pulls. So instead of having the, uh, the door opening mechanism, the catch inside, I'm just going to have a loop of leather that uh, I'm going to uh, use as the, the door pull. I'm thinking basically I want to have an inch wide, so two and a half centimetre wide straps, which means I'll cut out a five centimetre wide strip of leather Fold the edges into the inside, double stitch it, and um, there are my straps. So 
so far they've come out pretty good. They're nice neat door straps with the purple stitching look uh, quite neat and tidy. So now I need to join them together. And I went to my local craft shop and I got some eyelets. And they've got a little tool to, uh, to punch them so that should make them quite nice and neat. So uh, let's see if I can work out how to make these work. And they're done, and they look pretty good. I am quite happy with how they came out. They look, uh, they look great. So um, there are my new door pulls for the inside of the car. So um, now I suppose I'll show you how I'm actually going to attach them. All right, so we're inside the door, and what we have here is this is where the factory latch was connected. Basically, all we need to do is pull this little lever and attach this on, and there's your door pull. I just used uh, a little M5 nut and bolt in there with a couple of washers. I did use a bit of thread locker because I'm worried about it, you know, eventually undoing. So hopefully that will keep it uh, nice and uh, solid. Quite a simple little uh, change and um, yeah, a nice looking door pull. So now I'll just put it on the other side and then I've got to try and work out where to put the hole through my door trim. Right, the door trim's back on. I measured the uh, outside edges of the hole that I wanted and marked them top and bottom so I can mark the lines either side and then the distance up that I want the hole. So that is exactly where I want to cut my hole right here. Now let's take it off and cut it and fingers crossed I've got it all in the right spot. All right, that's worked pretty well. Um, the only issue I have is I've got to work out a way to hold the leather back and I'd really like to have a bit of a surround around this trim piece. The only thing is, is I'm trying to work out a way to fabricate that type of piece. It's a difficult shape to try and fabricate something that's basically a square tube that goes through but with a flat top head on it. I'll keep thinking and see what I can come up with. I'm not Okay, I've been thinking about this overnight and I've been trying to come up with a way to make a nice little surround for these door pulls. What I've come up with is I can go and buy the 964 RS ones, which is like a big black plastic circle with a slot in it, but uh, I don't really think that'll suit the look of this car. So what I'm thinking is it's probably a lot of work for a couple of tiny little pieces, but I'm going to make up a die and see if I can press my own little metal trim pieces using my vice in the workshop and see how it goes. All right, let me take you through my thinking here for my die. Now, I've got some stock here. This is a 25 by 8 mil rod, bar, whatever you want to call it. And um, this is some 6 mil plate. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to cut a hole into my 6 mil plate to be the, uh, the base of the die. And then I'm going to cut a piece of this off and shape it and this is going to punch through my hole and by putting a piece of sheet metal in between I can punch this through and uh, and hopefully sort of punch out a little flat plate with a hole punched through the center of it that curves in through my leather yeah that's the theory anyway so now I need to see if I can make the die and uh, see if it'll actually work So I have my die made up. So there's the female part of the die and the male part of the die and I'll put these in the vise and hopefully press out of sheet metal the piece that I want. Don't know if this is gonna work. I have no idea. I've never made a die before so um, it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens. All right, that worked really well. So. Basically, I've punched my hole through the center. It's curved everything in nicely. To start the hole, I drilled a hole through the middle and then cut slots either side because I knew if I just cut a slot in it, there would be no, nothing to 
be able to grip the back of the sheet, but because I cut, drilled a hole and cut slots either side, I've left these two tabs either end, which I can poke through my piece and then fold over to hold it in place. So it won't need any screws or anything on the outside. I think that looks really good. So I just need to um, cut it out and see how it works. And if it's good, then I'll make another one. And how good is that? Give it a light sand, give it a bit of primer and a coat of black and um, that is gonna do the trick beautifully. Now I'm gonna make one more and then paint them up and we're done. I'm really happy with that. It's a lot of work for a couple of tiny little insignificant pieces on the car really, but um, it just looks nice and neat and tidy and finished and um, yeah, and it was fun making a die from scratch that I'd never done before and pressing it out and cutting them out and um, and mounting them up and they fit perfectly. They, they're nice and secure now that they're wrapped over the back of the door trim. Oh, I couldn't be happier. was thinking about it all night and didn't know if it would actually work and uh, yeah, and, and it looks quite neat and tidy, like just like a ball one. All right, so as you saw, I've pulled my dash out and um, what my plan is, is I need to make a custom dash. These panels are warped and old and also, I wanna have a tartan strip through the center of the dash. There's a couple of places out there that offer like uh, some really good aftermarket uh, aluminium panels that are already cut to size. But as I'm going to be changing my dash now and I'm also gonna change it again later, I don't want to waste a lot of money on these custom aluminium pieces that I may need to change again later. And um, to be honest, I think I can actually make what I need. So these parts of the dash, I'm going to cut out of my 3mm MDF and, um, and go from there. So um, let's start with marking this stuff out. Okay, so this is sort of what I had in mind. So the aluminium strips, they're just sitting there at the moment. Yeah, so it's a matter of working out how to mount this all and then um, putting it into the car. All right, that panel is just sitting there. It's a bit of an idea. I've got to mount it properly and there's a few other bits and pieces that I'm gonna have to do to it. But um, I think that's a job for another week because it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, did you know that the Porsche 959 is not just one of the most technologically advanced cars of the 80s? With a stop speed of 200 miles per hour, it had the title of the world's fastest production car. And it was one of the first high performance vehicles with all wheel drive. It also has the honor of winning its class in the Le Mans 24 hour race. And it also won the Paris to Dakar, which is arguably the toughest race on earth. All right guys, that's it again for another week. I um, spent a lot of time building those dies to make the tiny little uh, pieces for the door pulls, but I think they really came out nicely, so I'm, I'm happy to spend the time. More to do on the dash next week, and um, hopefully I can get some leather again. So, uh, as always, please like and subscribe to my channel, Home Built by Jeff, and you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at the same place. See you later. One of the most technologically... Technologically, it sounds... <laughs> One of the most technical. <laughs> I can't. Oh. Look at this. It's so boring, I can't remember it all. All wheel drive. Uh, you don't have to do because you're just going to keep pausing it up. I just. It's so boring. <laughs>